Thanks to Wagner for sponsoring today's video. Painting the exterior of your house requires careful planning, preparation, and execution. It can be a daunting task, but with the right tools and techniques, you can achieve a professional looking paint job that will enhance the curb appeal and value of your home. In this video, I'll walk you through the steps to paint the exterior of your home using a paint sprayer. Be sure to check the description below for a free PDF download of this tutorial where all these supplies are linked. Step one is to choose the right paint. Before you start painting, it's important to choose the right paint color that complements the style and architecture of your home. Take a drive around your neighborhood and note which colors you like and dislike. Grab some paint samples and test them out on different areas of your home and look during different times of day to see how the light affects the color. You also need to consider the type, brand, and finish of the paint you will use. We are going with the Regal Select Exterior Paint from Benjamin Moore in a low luster finish. And the color we decided to go with is Revere Pewter. Our house was previously painted, so we didn't need to use a primer. Step two is to clear the surrounding area. Take this time to cut back any bushes or vegetation that's touching the house. It would be great to weed whack any grass or weeds that are up against the house. If you have dirt or wood chips, it's best to pull that away from the house a bit so you can get your paint as far down as possible. We had a bunch of dead electrical wires around the outside of the house that were an eyesore, so we checked with an electrician and removed any wires that were dead. Clear away any vehicles, furniture, anything that can be affected by overspray. I also decided to remove the downspouts instead of painting over them or trying to paint around them. Step three is to clean the surface. Now that the surroundings are clear, you'll need to clean the surface. I first used a cleaning solution in my pressure washer to apply it to the entire house. After that, I went around with plain water and pressure washed the entire house, making sure to get in all the corners. I carefully washed the windows as well and paid close attention to any paint that was peeling. Step four is to repair any damaged areas or imperfections. While pressure washing, I came across tons of peeling paint. We have stucco siding and it's not in great shape and the previous owners used cheap paint covered up. So Devin and I went around the entire house and scraped up any areas that were peeling with a five in one tool. Lay some drop cloths down and take this time to scrape any old chipping paint and fill holes where needed. After everything was scraped down, we used sanding blocks to sand over all the areas that we scraped. This will soften the edges of the peeled areas a bit and allow for better adhesion of the paint. Step five is to clean off any dust. After all that scraping and sanding, there's lots of dust and debris around the house, so we cleaned off all the drop cloths and cleaned off the house one last time to get all the dust off. Next step is to tape off windows, doors, and fixtures. Cover anything you don't want to get paint on with drop cloths, plastic wrap, or masking paper. Mm -hmm. 
since I'm spraying the house, I covered all the windows and doors with plastic. We are leaving the white paint around the window and door jams. It would have been best to place the tape right over the jams, but my tape wasn't sticking and I was worried that the paint sprayer would blow the tape right off. So instead I applied a border of tape to the face of the wall. Then I duct taped the plastic wrap right to the blue tape. We'll go back around with a paintbrush and cut in around the windows and doors once everything is sprayed. Cover or plastic off your deck, furniture, light fixtures, bushes and landscaping, grass, etc. Anything that's close to the house and can be affected by overspray. One thing we should have done was cover our AC unit. Next step is to prep your painting supplies. For this project, I'm using the Wagner Control Pro 170, and this is the perfect segue into the sponsor of today's video, Wagner. I love my Wagner paint sprayer. I actually have a few different paint sprayers from Wagner that I use for different projects. I wrote a blog post on that linked below if you want to check it out. This Control Pro 170 applies a consistent high quality finish on large home improvement projects such as decks, fences, exterior house siding, interior walls, and more. I've used the sprayer to stain the slat fence and to paint the entire exterior of my parents' vacation rental, and I'm excited to use it again here. This sprayer pulls paint directly out of a one or five gallon container, which means less annoying refills. The Control Pro also cuts over spray up to 55% compared to other airless paints sprayers. One of my favorite features is the incredibly light spray gun which saves my wrists. You can find the link to this Wagner paint sprayer in the description below. We have the paint sprayer all set up. Now let's take this time to get any other painting supplies out and easily accessible. Be sure you have your protective equipment ready gloves, safety glasses, ear pro, respirator mask. In addition to the paint sprayer, I used a four foot ladder, some cardboard shields to spray close to the ground, and then I used a metal shield with a handle that I could use for the sides and top of the walls. I have some rags handy in case of any spills or to wipe up any accidental overspray. Finally, the next step is paint, but first make sure you're in the clear of rain on the forecast. I've had to delay this painting project many times due to the rain down here in Florida, so be sure to give yourself a big enough window of time. When using a paint sprayer, here are a few tips. Overlap each stroke by about 50%. This will ensure an even coating. Flex your wrists as you move the gun. The gun should always remain perpendicular to the wall. The distance from the spray gun to the spray object should not exceed 18 inches. Between 10 and 12 inches is ideal. Release the trigger at the end of each pass. Start the gun in motion before pulling the trigger. If you start getting tailored in your spray pattern like you see in some of my spray strokes. This means there's an improper spray tip, spray material, spray pressure combination. I probably could have benefited from a larger spray tip, but I made it work. If you're using ladders, be safe, especially around power cords and hoses. After painting, be sure to remove tape right away and make any necessary touch-ups. Last but not least is the cleanup. Cleaning up and disposing of waste is also an important part of the process. This includes cleaning your paint sprayer, any brushes and rollers, disposing of leftover paint, and recycling or discarding any used materials. Let the paint cure according to instructions. To keep your paint job looking fresh and new, you should regularly check for damage or wear and repaint as necessary. Depending on the type of paint, type of siding, and the climate in your area, you may need to repaint every five to 10 years. We are in love with the new paint color. I plan to add some stained wood shutters to our windows and replace the wood siding at the peaks of the roof with some cedar shakes to soften the exterior a bit. So stay tuned for those projects coming soon. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some helpful tips. If you are painting your home soon, good luck. I'll see you in the next video.